Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We're doing a little bit of different work, something I've wanted to try for a couple years and just now getting around to doing it. We're putting some dwarf Essex seed into the ground, a variety of canola, two 50 pound bags into this field that was just cut for hay. There's some bare spots especially that I'm trying to hit a little bit harder. I don't know how good of results that we're going to have. I think we're gonna get some halfway decent results for the work that we get into it. It's almost early September. It's going to start cooling down. Hurricane Ida is sending up some rain and this was just finished so I'm hoping that we can get some good germination. This isn't just for the bees, it's also for the white-tailed deer and hopefully it'll help the deer out and then in the spring this will bloom for us and that's just great. One of the things that I love about beekeeping is how much it touches other things and impacts them in a positive way. It's not just about the bees. It's also about white-tailed deer, squirrels, birds. Bees do so much for the plants around here. The extra seeds they produce help birds thrive and other small mammals. And then in turn, they help predators out. And also, bees will go up into these big old hills up in here and pollinate the acorn trees, the white oaks, red oaks, and hickory trees and several other types of nut varieties and help them produce healthier, bigger seeds that are going to help white-tailed deer and several other species do well, which in turn, the better they do, more manure they put down, the plants do better. It all just feeds into one another. So I'm hoping we can get this down in here and not really produce a, you know, the goal isn't to get big honey yields out of it but maybe we can get some better nutrition in early spring on those critical days. Mustard and, and canola do really well in those cool parts of the season, and I really think that um, it could do well here. One of the things that inspired me to do that is when we purchased this farm many years ago, and there still is every spring, some wild mustard that's in the brassica family as well, just like turnips, cauliflower, canola, all of that stuff and it just comes up here wild every year and produces some seed pods and restarts again and you can always see the bees hitting that really hard so my thoughts are I'll purchase a hundred pounds of the seed and there's a lot of it and brassica seeds especially of this type have very good germination rates so I'm not expecting this whole thing to be covered in yellow blossoms but if we can get it kind of started a little bit uh, more than it was before. I'm hoping every year maybe that reseeding effect because we don't harvest hay super early that we can get a little bit more out of it. So this is just a little experiment that I'm doing. We're going to be running this 50 pounds on this field. I think there's roughly about 28,000 pounds uh, seeds to a pound. I can't remember. It could be more than that. And then we're going to do another 50 pounds in the other field. Let me show you what the bags look like just in case you'd like to try them out. So here are the two bags. They're very similar, but slightly different. So I'm hoping that between the two of them, we're gonna find out which one will do better in this scenario. Got the winter rapeseed right here. It's called a, you know, it's got trophy at the top. I'm not 100% sure what that means. It says C-A-N there. So I'm thinking that's probably from Canada or something like that, but it's got a nice big buck on it. So that means it's good. These blossoms right here also mean that it's good. Just hoping to get that high quality pollen and nectar in early spring just to help push our bees to that next level when our honey flow really starts. And right here we have the Dwarf Essex rape seed. And I've uh, got 50 pounds each. So we're gonna put the Dwarf Essex um, over here. Essex, sorry, Tennessee boy. What do you expect? And we're gonna put that over here and then we're gonna put the trophy over another field that's almost the same size and uh, that, that should be good. The deer don't get as big here as they do in a lot of places because we don't have a lot of corn and soybean and a lot of nutrition coming from that. These hills as you can see behind me they're just covered in goldenrod and several different things but that's really not a lot of fats and protein for the deer which in some ways is good because there's not a lot of chemicals around here and there's also a lot of wild things growing for the bees but we would like to see a little bit more nutrition for the deer. My dad's really the avid hunter, so it's kind of a help my bees, help the deer, kind of, you know. It's really easy to let my dad, uh, you know, get my dad to help me out with all this stuff as long as it benefits the deer. 
I wonder if he watches my videos. We're fixing to find out. That being said, I know my mother does, so he'll find out about it. <laughs> but I'm hoping this will work good for everybody, deer included. So anyway, so uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any suggestions on things that you've done, I would love to hear about in the comments below. I'm hoping to try a few other things like this in the future. Hoping this works well and maybe try some sweet clover and other types of broadcast because I don't want to have to plow all of this up. That really disrupts the soil. I don't want to spray this with herbicide and then plant it. And I don't have access to a drill, so I know that there are better ways to do this. However, this is the poor boy way of doing it. I'm not like Ian. I don't have all the big boy toys, you know, but anyways, <laughs> hope you're doing good up there, Ian. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.